Washington is buzzing as usual with anticipation over a new book on the House from former House Speaker John Boehner. Politico ran a lengthy essay adapted from it. And as expected, it is uninhibited in classic Boehner form. Now in keeping with the tone of the book cover, let's dim the lights a little bit and enjoy a fine non-alcoholic beverage. In Salute, honor of Steven. John. Salute. Where are the cigarettes? Did you bring them? No, that's the key. Can we actually talk about John Boehner without having cigarettes? I am told we are not allowed to smoke in the studio. So the game is off. Now, let's read, let's read a couple of these excerpts because they are they are gold. Um, all right, now. Boehner speaking of the 2010 midterms. You could be a total moron, get elected just by having an R next to your name. And that year, by the way, we did pick up a fair number in that category. <laughs> That's I mean. mean. <laughs> Look. But they got him elected to speaker. Where's the kudos to that? Well, they did. Trade-offs everywhere, right? Now, Boehner reminds us in an earlier time in U.S. politics, that seems almost quaint now. When he was first elected to Congress way back in 1990, he recalls, we didn't have any propaganda organization for conservatives, except maybe a magazine or two, National Review. The only people who used the internet were some geeks in Palo Alto. There was no Drudge Report, no Breitbart, no kooks on YouTube, spreading dangerous nonsense <laughs> like they did every day about Obama. Oh man, well, he's, Steven, he's America's dad, come it, on. And here's what you gotta remember, the buzz goes beyond political. This is what we're seeing on Twitter and social media in general. Let me read you this from Oliver Willis a writer of the American Independent. He says, I see we're at the phase where John Boehner pretends to be a moderate who keeps the crazies at bay while we watch him stoke the fires for years. The sad thing is this will work. The press loves the narrative and liberals like to think all this was back then, back in the day. Now hear this one, check this out from <laughs> David R. The experts are great. It is clearly in Boehner's voice and no punches are pulled. Nonetheless, when you find yourself reminiscing about the good old days when Boehner was in charge, you know America has really taken a turn in a very bad way. And there is such thing, though, as like a time when things worked, right? Like Congress's approval rating only goes down year over year. Is it really that bad just to look back See, with a little bit of nostalgia? And, and when you look at folks like Boehner, you can understand he understood the mechanics, right? Before, before Trump, when everyone was using deal maker and art of the deal, John Boehner was one of those guys. I mean, he was looking to work with both sides to cut deals even within his own party to get stuff done. All right, and then our last one here is from Alex Skoltnik, a self-described self thrash guitarist, and he says that he felt a sudden urge to put on a leisure suit, grab a vintage uh, arch top guitar, and accompany Boehner with retro jazz stylings a la Steve Allen accompanying Kerouac. And he did just that. Freedom means you can be a genius and invent new products that make you millions of dollars and helps millions of people. It means you're free to work your way to becoming the first in your family to go to college. It means you're free to reach as high as you want, no matter where you came from, even if you're a little kid sweeping a bar out in southwest Ohio. Take it from me. You'll never know where you'll end up. That's freedom. I'll raise a glass to that any day. P.S. Ted Cruz, go f yourself. We raise our glasses with you, John. Oh my God. That's the bit that's I, going viral. People are I, talking about it. I don't, I don't buy many political memoirs, but I will buy this one. I, think I will it, pick it up. It's going to be a good read, but I think the audio book now, because of all the off-scripted comments from Boehner, might be the way to go. This is what he's always done. He says bad words, and people are like, oh man, he's so cool. John Boehner goes off script. But like, I do want to stand up for Boehner for just a moment, because there's been a lot of relitigating his tenure since mm -hmm. we had House Speaker Paul Ryan, Nancy Pelosi, um, House, uh, former House member Justin Amash, and since he has left Congress, has been doing a lot of interviews yeah. talking about as somebody who helped kick Boehner out of the Speaker's yeah. office and put Paul Ryan in, regret. Because Paul Ryan was one of the most restrictive speakers mm -hmm. in the, the history of the office to cut members of Congress out of the process of making laws. 
And I actually am now looking back on Boehner as going like this was a transactional guy and what you need to make Congress work is some sort of transactional politics. Yeah, I think something that Amash has said, but also many other members, when they had these stories, right, these stories of John Boehner pulling them to the side, sometimes with that cigarette in his hand, is that <laughs> Boehner was an honest guy. I mean, we know him for someone who says curse words. I'll never forget during the, the big shutdown against Obama, he comes out, he says, and he, and he looks into the camera looking at lawmakers, said, let's do our goddamn job, mm -hmm. right? I don't even know if I'm allowed to say that here. But I remember John Boehner is one of those folks that says how he sees it, but then works with you. He's honest, but he allows you into the process, the amendment process, which Amash has talked about. And I think that's part of the mechanics that I was talking about earlier. He understands those. Yeah, I mean, Paul Ryan cut off the amendment process entirely. Basically, you then had a system in which the House leadership creates all the bills, and then they just corral everybody into voting for it, and they cut you out of good graces with the leadership, mm -hmm. they keep you off of committees if you don't back every single thing. And what Amash has talked about, which I just love, is like the idea of making laws is supposed to be discovery. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be getting everybody in the house together, figuring out what everybody needs, and then making the law. But right now, it's just top down. It's predetermined yeah, from the, the get-go. The, the famous quote that says, my uh, enemy at 20% doesn't have to be, if I agree with you on 80%, doesn't mean we have to be enemies on the 20%. What I think that allows is, folks, like, find that common ground, right? Amash, even within the Republican Party during that time with Boehner, they were able to work together in certain areas, even though Amash was the guy who was always voting against him as speaker. Well, I know why people are sensitive about doing rehabs of people's reputations after they leave Congress, you know, leave mm -hmm. D.C. after they've made millions, right, and they go back to private life. I get why that is unsavory. But we should also be able to look back and be like, things used to work, and now they don't. They used to get passed. Why, why is that?